Today's video is made possible by Hulu Plus. For a free extended two-week trial, head over to huluplus.com slash TLD. Hey guys, Jonathan here with TLD. Hope you guys are doing well. Now for those who had caught my setup and desk tour may have noticed that I finally got my custom 8-core D700 Mac Pro in. And because of that, a lot of you who have followed my coverage on the 6-core Mac Pro have been asking if I can do an update video covering comparisons of performance between both the 6-core and 8-core Mac Pro, which I've had for about two weeks now. So I thought I would do an initial impressions on my experience with both models. Now before I continue, I do want to let you guys know that somehow I plan on making this happen, a comparison of the quad core, six core, eight core, and 12 core Mac Pros. So thumbs up if you guys want to see that happen. So again, this video is going to be more impression based, a few benchmarks here and there, but overall more so just experience of using both the six core and eight core Mac Pro. Now real quickly going over the specs between both the 6 core and 8 core Mac Pro that I was able to check out. The 6 core obviously has less cores, but it's clocked higher at 3.5 gigahertz. This is configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM, twin Fire Pro D500 GPUs, and 256 gigabytes of PCIe flash storage. Now the 8 core model, like I said, does have more cores, but that is at the cost of a lower clock speed, which comes in at 3.0 gigahertz. This one is configured with 32 gigabytes of RAM, twin Fire Pro D700 GPUs, which actually have six gigabytes of VRAM versus the three on the D500s. Now real quickly, before I jump into performance, coming from 256 gigs on the six core Mac Pro up to 512 on the eight core Mac Pro was definitely nice. 256 gigabytes goes really quick, and I know that can be configured either way, but if you are configuring your Mac Pro, if possible, try to bump up that storage. So moving on to a few benchmarks. In Geekbench 3, the 64-bit edition, you can see the 8-core Mac Pro beats out the 6-core model by about 5,000 points in the multi-core score. Now as far as the single-core score, because the 6-core Mac Pro does have a higher clock speed, you can see it slightly outperforms the 8-core on that aspect, but not by a whole lot. Same thing on Cinebench R15. On the CPU side of things, the 8-core Mac Pro outperforms the 6-core by a pretty healthy amount. Now on the OpenGL side of things, however, there wasn't a huge difference between the D700s and the D500s on the 8-core versus 6-core. We're only looking at about 7.5 frames per second difference between the two here. So in terms of OpenGL, there really wasn't a huge difference there, but in Luxmark 2.1, which benchmarks OpenCL performance, there was actually a much bigger difference between these two with a score of 4,440 on the 8-core D700 Mac Pro compared to 3,194 on the 6-core D500 Mac Pro. Now moving on to more of the impressions and experience with the 6-core 8 Mac Pro, I really could tell a difference with Compressor 4.1. If we head up to the Preferences tab and go over to Advanced, we have the option to enable additional compressor instances, which will help increase performance. And on the six core Mac Pro, we can add an additional two instances. Now the way that works is actually based off the number of cores and the amount of RAM in the system. So if you check out Apple's support page, it ranges from four, eight, 12, 16, and 24 cores. Now that is actually based off hyper-threading. So the six core Mac Pro actually features 12 threads. So that's why it falls in that middle category. And you can see, even if you max it out at 64 gigabytes of RAM, you can only add an additional two instances with compressor. Now the eight core, because it has 16 threads, it actually jumps up to the next tier and you can add an additional three instances to compressor with this model. That stays the same across all amounts of RAM. And you can see if you did have the 12 core model, if you max that out at 64 gigabytes, you can actually bump that up to an additional five, which is kind of crazy to think about. So what I'm doing with compressor is taking a roughly seven minute ProRes clip and I'm transcoding that into H.264. Now the way I have it set up first and foremost, it is optimized for streaming. So that's gonna give it a compressed fast start header. I have it set to compressor's automatic high preset and I like to use a multi-pass transcode because if you notice, it's actually pretty interesting you actually get a smaller file size if you do it this versus single pass. The single pass transcode, which is still in the same high quality, same length, same everything, is coming about a gigabyte in size, whereas the multi-pass transcode is coming at just over 300 megabytes per second. So huge, huge difference there. So during the actual transcode on the six core Mac Pro, you can see we have that initial compressor instance, but we have that additional two that we added previously. Now conversely, on the eight core Mac Pro, you can see we have that initial instance, but in this case, we have an additional three instances, one, two, and three extra. So after really pushing and maxing out those cores on both the six core and eight core Mac Pro, it was able to transcode a seven minute ProRes file in about three minutes and 21 seconds on the six core Mac Pro, 
whereas the Acor Mac Pro did that same task in two minutes and 36 seconds. So we're looking at about a 45 second difference between the two, which may not seem like a whole lot, but when you multiply that by days, longer projects, that's gonna add up and save you a lot of time. Now, as far as if that extra performance is worth the price difference between the two, that really comes down to how you use your machine. Are you doing a few exports here and there? Are you doing multiple per day? It does saving that extra time, whether that's minutes, hours, or days in the long run, save you money, that's where you should implement that into your buying decision. So again, this has been more of an experience and impressions video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did and you are feeling like being awesome, make sure to hit that like button. It is much appreciated. And before I hop out of here, I wanna give a huge thank you to Hulu Plus for helping support the channel and allowing me to create content like this. Now I know most of you guys being on the interwebs know what Hulu is, but Hulu Plus ramps up the awesome and it's kind of like upgrading to an HD screen on your smartphone or tablet for the first time. With Hulu Plus, you can catch up on the entire season of currently airing shows. You can watch old favorites or even a movie. You can stream as many TV shows or movies as you want anytime, anywhere. So whether that's your PS4, your Xbox One, your Roku, Hulu Plus has a huge selection of shows like Saturday Night Live, Jimmy Kimmel, and of course, Shock Tank. They also feature exclusive original content like Behind the Mask and The Wrong Man, and they were nice enough to reach out to me and offer those who watch TLD a free extended two-week trial by heading over to huluplus.com TLD. Now, a lot of you ask, how can you help support the channel? This is a super simple and easy way to do that. It allows us to put out the best possible content that we can and you score a killer deal at the same time. Make sure to use that link down below to let them know we sent you. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. Like I talked about, I am gonna try and get comparisons of the Quad 6, 8, and 12 core Mac Pro, so definitely stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions, definitely drop me a line down below. I do try to reply to as many YouTube comments as possible, but it does get a little messy. So the absolute best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter at TLD Today. If you guys are interested in what software I use or you missed my setup tour, both of those are linked down below. And right here, if you missed it, is a comparison of the six core Mac Pro versus the late 2013 maxed out iMac. Again, this is Jonathan with TLD and I will see you guys later.